So today I'm joined by René Wolf. René Wolf is former track cyclist, most notable um, two times junior world champion, Olympic champion in the team sprint, world champion in the individual sprint in 2005, yep. Olympic champion 2004. Retired from competitive cycling 2007 and started coaching 2008. Yep. Okay. Started as a coach for the German Cycling Federation, then the Dutch Federation, and literally on the way to the airport to take up a new role in <laughs> New Zealand. That's right. <laughs> Welcome, René. Welcome. Thanks. René also has most notable successes with his athletes at the Rio Olympics. Elis Lichle, Olympic champion, who was on the interview and Matthias Buchli, silver medalist, amongst many other successes. So kind of the Franz Beckenbauer of uh, track cycling. <laughs> Far away from that. <laughs> I also wanted to interview René because a lot of athletes who have been here previously, like Matthias Buchli, Jeffrey Hoferland, Nils van Tunderdal, Shane Braspenix, have mentioned René's name as the one who has given them the best advice of their career. So, I'm surprised by that. Let's have a look. Okay, let's start with the first question to break the ice. Why is your nickname Heintje? Uh, because of my notable voice uh, and the Germans uh, in the German team in the time where, where I competed, uh, there was the, the idea that everybody has a nickname and um, the, uh, yeah, they come up with Heintje and since then they're still using it. Okay. So if, if we meet all the athletes and we're sitting together for dinner or stuff like this, I still have this name. Okay, cool. So René, what was your darkest moment? It can be as an athlete or as a coach. Um, I do not have really dark moments as an, uh, as an athlete because uh, most of the dark moments or darker moments I have were followed by light moments. Uh, I could... I could place like um, I had a quite bad crash at the Worlds in 2014, which resulted that I can't compete in the Worlds, um, which meant I'm not qualified for the Olympics, which was solved that I get a wild card for the Olympics mm. just a few weeks later. So, um, at all, uh, I had a had a good career. I had a nice career. Uh, darkest moments as a coach uh, was certainly I started as a young ambitious coach here in the Netherlands uh, tried to qualify a team sprint for the Olympic Games in London and we missed out qualification by 40 points um, we gathered in all the competitions we did for qualification we gathered uh, per competition about 200 points and we did we couldn't compete in one competition because there was no budget hmm. so we actually we yeah we were we were um yeah decreased by uh, by budget and that's that's what really pity moment so and, and that was one of the darkest moments in my coaching career what has that moment taught you or what did you learn from it um what did I learn from it? Took everything in your own hands and tried to solve it on forehand. So what was your best moment? Best moment? Best moment I wasn't involved. Um, it, was, it was certainly a winning team sprint uh, of the guys here in the Netherlands uh, l this year. So um, um, we fought a long time for this. Uh, I was coaching this team for like uh, uh, from from 2010 started with Matthijs and Hugo when they were really young um, get get everybody onto the team and finally seeing the team on on top of the world mm. um, winning the rainbow jersey um, that was a what was a really good moment yeah yes. I believe that I also thought that was a very special moment yeah. for me <laughs> okay so looking back at your career as a coach and as an athlete, what advice would you give your younger you? Um, in Germany we say uh, Die Suppe wird nie so heiß gegessen, wie sie gekocht wird. Mm -hmm. 
which is, which means um, take it easy, take uh, one step at a time. Uh, don't get distracted by uh, things will just come in your way. Just have a have a have a night of sleep and uh, let's see how to solve the problem and get it step by step. Um, young athletes or athletes are really emotionally involved with their program, with their success, with their uh, own development, um, which just keeps them uh, many times from from seeing the bigger picture and um, and and leaving things go and and just be in the moment instead of seeing the big picture and, mm. and taking advantage of that. Yeah. yeah, I would add to that, I think it's not only young athletes, I mean, also yeah. managers have coaches, right? Because yeah. the outside perspective is yeah. difficult. Uh, the, once you're involved, it's very difficult to see the bigger picture at times. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And what is your coaching philosophy? I don't know if I have a coaching philosophy because at the end it's uh, uh, the work of a coach is uh, helping the athlete to achieve their goal mm -hmm. and um, to be to be uh, caught in one philosophy means you can't deliver every athlete so um, I actually try to uh, to look after what the need of every athlete is and to work on that and try to help every athlete uh, to to de to achieve what they want actually uh, there are there are really key figures in um, which means uh, consistency uh, honesty um, I think that that are the two most uh, important things in in developing athletes and, and helping athletes toward their own goals. Hmm. I also read that there's a quote from you. Du musst das Leben nicht verstehen, dann wird es wie ein Fest, which can be translated. You don't have to understand life, and then it'll be like a party. What does um, it mean for you? It, it's not a quote for me. Okay. It's a it's a quote from uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, okay. which is a quite famous in Germany quite mm -hmm. famous uh, symbolist, a writer, um, and I would I would work on your translation just a little. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, you don't have to understand life. Mm -hmm. That's right. But the second uh, part of the sense is um, then it could be like a festival, um, which means um, it's it's totally dependable dependable on on you as a person. There are there are people who really need to understand the deeper meaning of life and to develop their own thoughts about this and go through. But it's not a must of, of enjoying life. So mm -hmm. you can you can also enjoy life if you don't understand it deeply and you just enjoy it every day on, on your daily basis. So it actually, for me, is, is just a point that, uh, that every person can have a different, um, different uh, depth and different angle of sight of the world. Mm -hmm. But still the same level of enjoyment, or still the same level of uh, of development, or whatever you call it. Mm. So it's it's just uh, the individually of of life. Mm. Interesting. I would probably argue that the ones who don't try to understand life are probably a bit happier. But Can be, but we never know. No, you never know. I think it's very individual. Yeah, well, it's, it's 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 an interesting point. Yeah. yeah. So what are your core values? I mean, you mentioned uh, consistency and honesty in coaching. What other core values do you have? Um, let's, let's go back to, to honesty. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a coach, you, are, you have to be aware that, um, that you actually um, may be a real important, but at the end you are an, an external feedback tool for the athlete. Um, You can provide advice. You can uh, you can uh, deliver the bigger picture. You can you can help them. You can help them with uh, with knowledge you have. You can help them with with feelings you you deliver or with with uh, 
experience you you made yourself and stuff like this but at the end you are an, um, um, an feedback tool so mm -hmm. what you have to deliver is straight feedback um, and this this in in, in different ways so um, if you come back to to honesty uh, you it's it's straight connected with communication so you have to be able to find a way of communication that uh, you are understood by the athlete um, which means uh, as a coach you have to be totally flexible in in your ways of communication because you're your communication always has to match with the athlete. That's the most important thing. Um, and consistency is uh, the next thing. It means you have to stay to your own values. You have to stay to um, to what you communicated and what you what you deliver to the athlete. And for sure, this will shift over the years, and it will develop, and it will uh, evolve. But you can't, uh, you can't uh, tell one thing on one day and have an ex uh, tell another thing on another day. And what's what's also the most important thing? Um, what's interesting for um, for the most coaches? You also have to live up yourself um, um, to these values. At the end, um, as a coach, uh, you. As we as we look at high high performance cultures, you live like uh, on training camps or on on daily basis. Uh, you have a lot of time with your athletes, and if you are not living up yourself to the values what you ask from your athletes, it doesn't work out on the long term. So you you can do it for short term, but it doesn't work out on the long term because you you. Um, Athletes will not believe you anymore if if you if you're not living up to what you ask. So I think this, in, if you put this in honesty and consistency, if you put all this in these two words, I think it could describe uh, the core values. There's also another thing I wanted to ask you. I saw on your Twitter account you have the quote of Churchill: "To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often." Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, let's uh, let's put it a little bit more in the in the past and um, to put it on uh, on Socrates, you never step twice in the same river, which means uh, you always have to adapt to the uh, to the current situation. Um, that means if if we have the bigger picture and. Um, we we uh, we standing in front of a river. Mm -hmm. You step you step one step into the river. You are with your feet in the river. You step back out again. Wait a minute. The piece of water where you're standing in is just moving further. Mm -hmm. So if you if you wait a minute and step back into the water, it's totally different water. It's still the same river, but it's different water. Okay. So and that means if you if you look as as athlete development, you you can't copy periodization and stuff like this in in detail uh, from one year to the another one. You you always have to look at the bigger picture and have to look where this where is this athlete coming from? What's the need? What's the what does make sense for development? What does make sense for um, which which values you have to develop? Which um, uh, looking for the English word which uh, yeah, what you want to develop at the moment and what it's what do you need for the next competition what do you need for the competition after and and build a chain of this but um, be aware that uh, if you build a plan the longer the plan gets the, um, the more likely it gets that it got changed because if you make a four-year plan, mm. you uh, you will never get a uh, four-year plan. You you will have it as, as as a guideline, but not a detailed plan. Which person has influenced and impacted you most, and why? Uh, it's um, beside my parents, um, which which guided me through 
through all my life and helped me to, to develop my own self. It's uh, for sure, it's my own coach. Um, I, I cycled my whole cycling career with, with one coach and um, we had a real good relationship that um, when, when he stopped coaching, I took over his job uh, in Germany. Uh, so it was it, um, yeah he just he just taught me to to trust myself and to make my own decisions and to trust those decisions and go for it and even um, which is um, maybe the most important thing um, take a decision go for it even even a, a wrong decision is better than no decision yeah. and just if you took a decision, don't ask uh, about it anymore because the decision is taken. You've done it, so um, everything what comes after, you have to you have to develop on this decision and not not questioning the decision anymore because it's after you. Yeah, that's actually what Matthias said. Uh, what he got from you, the best advice is yeah. that you know make a decision, give it at least half a year or one year yeah. before you change plans. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's it's uh, it's fine that uh, that athletes uh, trying to uh, to get through with this and, and to develop it further. Um, and I think it's it's something uh, for Matthias. It's really important also to get uh, to get some some time on this, and because. He's he's the kind of guy. He would, if he if he has the ability, he can change ideas uh, within days. Mm. So um, if he gets some time to think over and to develop through, then it's it's fine for him. Yeah. How do you manage a team? How do I manage a team? Um, well, let's let's be a bit more precise. I mean, how do you manage individual expectations as well as team expectations? I mean, the sport is for the people also who are watching. You have to qualify as a team, right? Yeah. So every team member has to contribute to that. But yeah. on the other side, some team members also have their individual goals. So when it's, for example, a competition that could be important for the team is not always important for that individual. Yeah. So that's sometimes where it's a balancing act. How do you manage that? Oh, the question is: the question is, um, um, does individual goals um, uh, stand in the way of team goals, or are team goals standing uh, team goals standing in the way of individual goals? That's that's um, if you're working as a as a head coach for a federation, it's it's a constant. Uh, um, a way that you have to combine individual goals with uh, squad goals or with with goals from from your federation, um, but it's it's mostly about working out uh, to match those goals and not uh, to separate them. So um, if you look at uh, if you look at an, at a team sprint, uh, if you are able to compete in a team sprint on world level. Then you are likely. Then you are physically in the ability to compete on your own uh, uh, in an individual or in event. Is it Kirin or sprint or team sprint? So you, um, the physical base is can be done in in that part of training. So that means you have tactical and technical bases uh, where you can work on and which we just f add to each other. So um, it's mostly it's mostly about uh, combining goals. It's not about uh, one goal doesn't have to be the enemy of the other goal. You just can combine it. Okay. And then another question that would interest me is, especially working at the higher level, you always have some strong individuals. So sometimes I think they have their own opinion, which is not always the opinion of the coach. So how do you determine when you should back off and when sh do you sh when should you put your foot down? Um, it depends. It depends uh, on the uh, individual ability of the athlete to to see the bigger picture. Um, there are athletes who need to be uh, to be guided um, 
more strictly the athletes who don't need to be guided you it's like um, I, as a coach I don't see my my role in a policeman or stuff like this um, it's mostly about um, um, we are uh, I have a meeting with the athlete with the squad um, we are determining goals we are determining the way how to reach those goals and um, which involves uh, which training program we do um, how how to fill in um, which involves uh, how which what other uh, interventions we take um, and it also involves um, what kind of uh, of uh, lead leading you want to have as an athlete for me as a coach so it's it's um, more that um, we have an agreement on forehand how do I um, do I stand beside you or do I lead you or I'm your partner or I'm your your uh, leader uh, it's it's about uh, the athlete the athlete um, mostly fills in this um, uh, this question hmm. and then if discussions come up you refer back to the yeah. agreement as a basis of yeah. discussion mostly yeah. okay cool how has being an athlete helped your coaching um It gave me a lot of experience. Um, uh, and it, it helped me to, to un actually getting getting knowledge in coaching helped me to understand my uh, my living as an athlete and my being as an athlete, um, which gave me even more experience because um, Most of the or some of the situations, most of the situations where uh, athletes are in, uh, I have experienced myself. So, um, which means um, I can refer to that. I can understand um, for sure. Uh, there is a need of uh, of different coaching tools you add in than you would do on yourself, because every people is different. But it helps me to, to understand the situation of the athlete and it helps me to, to recognize uh, uh, in which situation the athlete is yeah. and uh, what could be the next step on, uh, uh, to help them uh, find themselves their next uh, step. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a requirement for a coach having been a good athlete himself or herself? No, I don't think so. It's, it's something what, what helps you because it delivers a lot of, uh, a lot of experience. But I don't think it's an requirement. Okay. The most important thing you you have to deliver is that you that you have to you you have to um, you you need to to understand people. You need to understand situations of life, and you need to understand that uh, um, uh, athletes are human beings and not functional uh, robots. Mm. I think that's the that's a real important uh, quality of coaching. No. What's your take on motivation, or let's say motivation versus discipline? It's an interesting because um, uh, it, it it just tips on on what we just talked about. Um, There are athletes for for them it's uh, it's discipline, and there are athletes for them it's it's motivation, and it's it's like they need to some some of them need to be guided, some of them are, have uh, their daily motivation can see out of the bigger bigger picture, and they just uh, understand okay if I want to reach this over two years I have to do this for the next two days or this this and this. But there are also uh, athletes who just uh, need to be shown that bigger picture again and again, um, uh, and need to be uh, need to have uh, um, partially goals and stuff like this. So it's it's more about um, uh, how to organize that um, 
athletes will will have their motivation. So it's how to break it down that the athlete understand what to do, and that's uh, that's a totally individual uh, question. Could take longer with some than with others. <laughs> and it, it, well, that's no. There are there are athletes who you will always have to lead through this process and there are athletes who pick it up with, with the years and understand more and more and more of their own development and there are athletes who just have it from from young age so it's that are the, the three extremes of, of the whole spectrum and in between that everybody is moving How do you choose your support staff the people you want to work with? It's mostly about, um, of course, there are there are circumstances. Uh, if you work in high performance environments, um, uh, which like an NOC or stuff like this, funding issues where you either can choose or either can't choose. Um, but next to this, it's uh, mostly about quality of the people and um, acceptance by the athletes, um, because uh, athletes need to. Um, need to accept the expertise of of the support staff um, I can't implement a physiotherapist uh, which the athletes don't accept as a good physiotherapist I can't implement a good strength and condition coach which is not seen by by the athlete as a good uh, strength and condition coach so it's mostly about um, about uh, acceptance of the of the group How does a typical day in the life of a coach look like? Is there a typical day of a life in the... You tell us. I think, um, as I said, you never... Um, you work with human beings on, uh, on both, on all sides around you. So you have to manage a program which is, um, which is uh, determined by a, a federation, by an NOC or by whatever, but actually which is filled in by human beings. And next to this you have athletes um, who are human beings and every day is different. So um, you have to expect uh, everything as a coach on, on every day. So um, which means um, holding structure and uh, holding uh, the bigger picture in, in this highly highly dynamic uh, surrounding that's the everyday uh, life of coach to close it do you want to nominate someone to be interviewed to get a an, uh, an, an real interesting picture on on coaching um, I would uh, nominate uh, you and Otto mm -hmm. uh, He's coaching short track in the Netherlands. Uh, he's doing that uh, quite successfully. Uh, short track is a real um, interesting sport, uh, metabolic wise, but also technical wise because it's uh, it's a gamble at all. But um, it's coachable, so um, it would be interesting to hear. That's cool. I'll reach out to him. All right. Thanks, Vinny. You're welcome. Thanks for your time. You're welcome.